Juliana versus Amanda. What's going to happen in part two, guys? How do you see it? Generally, you would lean, I feel, towards Amanda the end. Just if you looked at the history of the sport, or if you went a step further and you looked at their first contest. Typically, things don't change the second time. Why would they? Amanda was in full control of that fight. That actually proved to be her downfall. And let me dig into that a little bit, because maybe that's not what your eyes told you. Perhaps that's where I can offer you some insight being in there. When everything is going your way, when every punch that you set out to land does, but the effect is not what you're used to or what you imagined, that will play tricks on your mind and that will tire you out. That will exhaust you. If you go and hit somebody with everything you got just as you planned to, but what the next step you saw in your mind is them going down, them crumbling, the referee stepping in, your hands going up and everybody goes home. If you do everything you set out to do, but you don't get the result and or the effect that you thought you were going to get, things change quickly. And Amanda, I got to compare this. Do you remember Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz part one? It was never more apparent there. And Conor even spoke to it. Conor landed that left hand on Nate, the same one that put everybody else down. And Nate took it. And Conor talked about that. He said, man, that changed me. I'd never hit a 70-pounder before. I didn't think it was going to be any different. I thought the power was the power. Who cares how big he is? They could put down a 55-pounder, the same power could put down a 70-pounder. That's what I thought. I actually agreed with Conor. I thought Conor was right. Turned out it wasn't true. Whether that's Nate, whether that's the weight, I suppose maybe we don't have total clarity on that. But either way, we do know that Conor hit him with the same punch as the one Carl, uh, Conor World Championships that won Conor Fight of the Night bonuses that ended the night of Conor's opponents, and Nate took them. We do know that to be true. And I only use that example because that's largely what happened here with Amanda. Even though there wasn't the change in size, Amanda did knock the holy hell out of Juliana Pena, and Juliana just didn't care. She did not care. She did not change her style at all. I'm talking about Juliana. She did not back away. She didn't change stances. She didn't revert to grappling heavy and get out of this range. Juliana did nothing different. She just kept coming at her and kept coming at her. And kept, and that's what made Amanda fold. That choke and that technique, I know a lot has been made of that. And some people say that choke wasn't on. That's the school I come from. Juliana even reached out to me. So did Juliana's coach. She said, whoa, just a second. We work on that every day and it's called a such and such. I don't want to debate that. I'm just sharing for you what, whatever technique Juliana would have offered in that moment, Amanda was ready to hit the showers. She was done. I'm sharing for you that she was done because she was frustrated. She was frustrated because she was tired. And she was tired because her offense worked. But it didn't hurt her opponent. So that's what Juliana is going to have to deal with. Now, we really do have to take a good look at those seven minutes that Juliana and Amanda fought for. And we do have to juxtapose that against the seven minutes that Connor and Nate fought for. It was the same fight. But when they rematched it, Connor, and I quote Connor here, was more efficient with his energy changed the fight, changed the duration, and changed the outcome, got himself the victory. So largely, that is what Amanda's up against. Does Amanda want to do what Connor did? Which is, I'm going to go and hit you, but I'm not going to hit you with absolutely everything, and I'm not going to expect you to fall over, and I'm not going to get frustrated when you don't. I'm going to reserve energy, so in the next round, I can do it again, and the round after that, I can do it again. And the round after that, the round after that, should we get there? One strategy other strategy is go out and do the same thing except do it harder. Those are really your only two choices. I'm going to hit her the same way, but I'm going to commit everything to it. I'm going to work in training camp so that I do get a different effect. I'm going to get in and I'm going to get out. I'm going to be the same storm that I've always been and looked around and there was never a tree left standing. She's the only one and I'm going to change that this time. Maybe, maybe we're left to guess. It's largely what this fight is about. If you go back and you watch that first fight, and I believe it was a six to one spread. I know that I'm real close. But if you go back and watch it, you will see that the betters had reason to believe so much in Amanda. It wasn't overly competitive. It was not tit for tat. It was just an absolutely determined and dog tough Juliana. So now that we've discussed what Amanda needs to do, let's go take a look at what Juliana does, needs to do, which is be fully aware of what happened. Be fully aware that she got touched up. Be fully aware that she lost the first round. Be fully aware that the power of Amanda is very real. 
and that she's going to get hurt again and she's going to have to deal with it again. But don't get frustrated the same as you did last time. If Juliana can do I think Juliana's going to win. That's a huge statement. Amanda is the GOAT. Juliana is not. If Juliana beats Amanda again, Juliana is still not. It's still Amanda. And then there's a period of time where that can change. I'm just sharing for you. I'm not arguing who the better fighter is. I'm not arguing who's more successful. I'm not arguing who's had a better resume up until this point. I'm just suggesting if that hunger and that grit and that very awareness by Juliana of what happened, of what she had to deal with, of why she had more energy and why Amanda was starting to check out, if she's aware of those things and she's prepared to walk through fire once more, she can win again. And I believe that is where Julianne is. I believe just by hearing the anger in her voice after she won the championship, I believe hearing the anger in her voice leading into this championship, that she is still looking at herself as the challenger. We saw that just recently. Aljo did not act like a champion at all. He did not speak like a champion in the least. He was pissed off with a chip on his shoulder because people questioned how he won the championship. He approached the Peter Yan fight as though he was the challenger. I think Juliana's in that same state of mind. I can't prove it. Just what I think. I picked Juliana the first time. I'm picking Juliana this time. I have seen through history somebody that goes out and gets a great result and just simply can't duplicate it. We never did Holm versus Rousey part two, but we did do Sarah versus St. Pierre part two. We did do Hughes versus St. Pierre. There is vastly different results if you can change the way that you fight and if your opponent comes in satisfied. I don't think Jules is satisfied. It's a guess. But it's my guess that I watched him through the Ultimate Fighter and Jules is right up the road and I get all sorts of updates about her training. I think she's just as hungry. I think she's just as angry. I think she is ready to walk through fire a second time, except this time she comes in with a little bit more confidence.